Should chokeholds be banned for use by law enforcement? There's a major push right now in America for chokeholds or neck restraints of any kind to be banned for use by law enforcement. And as an organization, as a family that has been using neck restraints for almost 100 years and an organization that has been teaching them to law enforcement for almost 30 years, we have an opinion, we have some thoughts on the matter, and we'd like to discuss those with you today. But first, we want to go over some things to make sure that we're all on the same page. Yeah, because before, before sharing or, or, or experience with it, let's talk about what are the difference. Choke holds, vascular neck restraint, what, like, what, is, what is happening? What's the difference here? Right, so choke hold, when you use the actual name choke, you're implying that you're plugging the airway from the mouth into the lungs, right? So placing your arm directly across someone's throat and crushing inward actually plugs their airway and they cannot intake oxygen into their lungs. No one supports this. This can have dangerous consequences, not effective uh, in terms of utilizing it in a less than lethal situation. Whereas a neck restraint, a vascular neck restraint, when your arms are plugging the sides of the neck can cause restriction of blood flow to and from the brain and after six to 10 seconds, the person passes out. When you release after they pass out, right? If you release within a few seconds after they go unconscious, they regain consciousness spontaneously and back they are. And very rarely are there any injuries or adverse effects or death. It's a very safe technique. And ignoring the numbers in law enforcement, if we just look at the numbers of thousands of people every single day that are used and, and have vascular neck restraints applied to them in martial arts, jujitsu specifically practice, and we don't hear about deaths. And yep. to be very clear, we refer to these vascular neck restraints as chokes. Sometimes the terms are used interchangeably, correct? In classes here, we say this is a choke, but we have never learned a choke in the way that you demonstrated when it comes to collapsing yeah. And, yeah. Yes. and affecting the breathing. We've never learned it. It's, chokes have always been vascular, vascular neck restraints so, for us. So it's really a misnomer. And the important part here is this, the vascular neck restraint can become lethal if used by someone who doesn't have the training and doesn't know when to let go. First and foremost, they just don't know when to let go. Mm -hmm. So pressure's applied, someone's unconscious, and you keep pressure on the vascular structures for an additional three minutes and 47 seconds, someone can die. And people have died because of the misuse of this tool of the neck restraint. But what we need to make sure is clear, first and foremost, is that it's a very safe technique when you look at the statistics of the number of neck restraints that are applied annually worldwide in pr private practice in martial arts practice in professional mixed martial arts and in policing and then you look at the number of incidents where there's actual lasting injury or death it's like not even yeah so one percent one tenth of one hundredth of one percent so if the technique is safe and we are standing by the side of the vascular neck restraint why is it that we're having this discussion right now? Why is it that we have to... Well, so here's the it. challenge. The technique is as safe as the user is trained. This mm. is what it boils down to. Like any tool, a hammer in the hands of someone who has no hammer training can be a liability. A screwdriver is a liability. A firearm with an officer with no training is a huge liability. And a neck restraint, a vascular neck restraint, if misused, yeah. can also be a liability. So we wanted to make this video to make it clear that we understanding and we've been fighting for departments to increase the amount of training provided to officers on an annual on your annual basis yeah. for almost 30 years you don't get it four hours a year is not enough training and we've tirelessly fighting more we guys need more training it has to be more and more and more monthly training instead of yearly training no avail no who knows why budget concerns politics who knows we're on the outside trying to make this change and we can't as a result Officers are learning a technique one time in a four hour block, once every two years sometimes. Not enough. And then a year and a half later, they're using this technique and they have no idea how to use it safely. That's when the liability comes in. So that being said, and as long as training is right, grossly underprovided, we support the escalation of vascular neck restraints to lethal force only, which means we support the banning of the use of vascular neck restraints for anything but lethal, deadly force situations. Mm -hmm. However, some people are even pushing for the absolute ban of these techniques entirely. Like they're never even talked about, looked at, discussed ever. And I think that would be a major disservice. Yeah, because, especially nowadays. People yes. are training, there's, there's all the martial arts movement growing so much, everyone's practicing jiu-jitsu, the bad guys are also learning. And now we're depriving officers and humans from knowing the threat and even though we have to respect the move, 
and treat with the seriousness that, that it deserves, it should not be pushed under the rug and not be talked about. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what we are, we're aiming to do now. There's also something that is untangible when it comes to your knowing of this technique and your knowledge of this technique. I, for example, can get in a hundred street fights and not use this in any street fight. Mm. But the fact that I know that if somebody attacks me, if someone is threatening my life or a loved one, that I have this very safe and effective technique to keep myself safe and the loved ones around me, it allows me to operate. It allows me to exist and to be uh, almost a more compassionate person. I'm mm. almost less likely to use other means of harming someone because I have this very safe tool. So there you go. So this is why we are such proponents of making sure that the neck restraint is continued to be utilized and at least authorized at the lethal force level because here's what happens. By and large, when you look at the statistics, it's a non-lethal technique. Accidents happen by undertrained officers and who abuse the technique, right? A, a hammer can be a lethal technique or it can be a great tool to use. So by and large, it's a non-lethal technique. So to allow it to still exist at the lethal level means that an officer, when his gun, let's just say, and this has happened, the gun falls on the floor, the officer and the suspect are fighting for the gun, the officer ends up behind the suspect, is able to put on a vascular neck restraint. The suspect went unconscious. The, so the officer retained his firearm, was able to cuff the suspect, and because of that, didn't have to use his firearm against the suspect. Mm. So having such a useful tool, maintain presence and utilization at the lethal force level gives the officers the ability to control, subdue, and neutralize a potentially lethal threat without in vast majority of cases, lethal force because of the safety of this technique, especially when there's proper training surrounding it. But at a point where, and I think no one is gonna argue that in a life or death situation, the officer's life is in danger, they're about to die, that they should be allowed to use this technique. The same way no one would argue with an officer's ability to use a brick to hit someone in the head to survive if someone's getting killed, or to run over someone with their car if someone is shooting at the officer to use the car as a means of neutralizing that threat. So the point is, really when it's life or death, anything goes. And all we're saying is that even though we support the banning of this technique at the less than lethal range of uses when it comes to use of force, um, we do think it's important that it's still in the discussion of law enforcement, both for the utilization at the lethal force level, where it could actually save the suspect's life yes. if this is opted for instead of a gun, but also what Evandro was saying when it comes to officers must know how to defend against this technique because people are learning every single day and, how to use these. And back to what you said is that some people are, con are considering the idea of completely throwing it out of the window. It's not an option at not all. Not talked about, not mentioned, not which, practiced in any regard. Which that means that it won't be practiced and it won't be trained in the departments, which we see as we don't suggest that because we see how it can be used to actually do good. And like you said, resort to yes. a, a lethal option, but yet not take it there. Use with control. With education and control, it's used to simply subdue and then handcuff the suspect. And we have many departments that, had, that do deploy enough amount of practice for their movement, for the vascular neck restraint, and they do utilize in a less than lethal situation on the streets because they do have the time on those unique departments. And you might be one of them, so very briefly, just understanding that the, even though at first, my the first instinct would be, ah, oh, no, man, we work so hard and Jiu Jitsu is growing so much towards the acceptance by departments, even though it could be perceived as a step back, it's, we're only stepping back so we can pounce forward with different and more techniques. This is a great point. So it's one of two things. Either a department has to increase the amount of training provided to officers with regards to the use of vascular neck restraints to ensure proper deployment, proper release time, proper aftercare for mm -hmm. the suspect after they go unconscious and they're cuffed and you take care of the suspect right when they go unconscious, you can transition into aftercare procedures. So if all of that is trained and trained regularly, a department conceivably could choose to keep the vascular neck restraint at a less than lethal level of utility. That's their choice. And we would even support that. But since we know that so many departments don't provide this training, we support the escalation or the elevation of the vascular neck restraints into a, you know, the only lethal force category of use because the amount of training necessary to make sure that it's not used improperly is too much. There's yeah. a reason why, there's a reason why 
Why when an, when an officer uses a firearm, misuses a firearm? Wrongful shooting, shoots the wrong person, misses, shoots over there. Why is it that the entire country isn't asking for a ban on firearm use for all police? Maybe some people are, but by and large, I, we don't ask for banned firearms for police, right? And the reason is, I think there's an understanding that there's very strict training requirements and requalification requirements when it comes to firearms. We're talking about monthly, at the very least quarterly, qualification requirements with your, with your pistol to make sure, and with your rifle every so often. So they have to requalify so often that we say, okay, no, we don't need to ban it because by and large, they are being trained, retrained, recertified. If that level of training requirement and recertification and upkeep was provided for the tool like a vascular neck restraint, similar to a firearm, we would support that tool's existence at lower levels of force because it is a lower level of force when you look at the statistics in the deployment of that technique both on the private side and in the law enforcement side. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going that way where they're going to increase the amount of training on this technique. So in the meantime, we support its elevation to lethal force use only because that will increase or decrease the chance that an officer with very little training misuses that technique prematurely when it yeah. wasn't otherwise necessary and a lower level of force without any neck restraint. And it avoids the accident, the possible, if no one touches necks, the accidental situations where someone dies because of a neck restraint can be greatly reduced, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we can also focus a little more on when to remove the training of the VNR, you give officers a little more time to train simply punch protection. Mm -hmm basic techniques that keep them safe from either strikes or even, you know, be able to control a suspect, simplifying what they're learning. So basically what I'm hearing from us is that if I have a lot of time to train a certain technique, the liability, mm. it will be much smaller. Mm. And because we don't have that amount of time or whatever doesn't uh, receive that amount of time, the liability will go up. So it's an inverse correlation between training time, liability, or training time, liability. And that could be with a VNR, could with be a any firearm, tool, or, or anything. Or a hammer, any tool. The more training, the lower the liability. And since we know that the training is grossly underprovided to police officers around the country, especially mm -hmm. with hands-on tactics like this, why is it VNR training as emphasized as a firearm, right? We don't know. We don't have the answer and we don't control that. But we know that as long as that is the case where it's disproportionate, then the allowance of that technique at anything other than lethal force is going to be a liability because you are going to have people deploying it who simply don't know how to do so in the yes. safest possible manner because they're not regular practitioners of either GST or Jiu Jitsu. So effective immediately, what we are doing as an organization is we are transitioning from the teaching of our vascular neck restraints, which we do teach and we do certify people and instructors in through our Gracie Survival Tactics program, effective immediately, we are transitioning from teaching those vascular neck restraints as offensive control tactics, safe, effective, offensive control tactics, to the exploration and practice of those techniques as survival escape techniques. So in other words, we're gonna focus on the counters to the vascular neck restraint, front headlock neck restraint, triangle vascular neck restraint. We're gonna focus on the defenses so that every officer at the very least knows how to defend against that type of neck restraint utilized against them. Now, by practicing the defense and in practicing the defense, they will also learn the mechanics of the technique. Mm -hmm. And if at that point, you know, in a deadly force situation, they need to call on that technique, they'll be somewhat familiar with it, but the core purpose for the practice of that technique will be to make sure that with all the new MMA fans and people learning these techniques by watching TV and seeing these, you know, neck restraint, rear naked choke, triangle choke, guillotine choke, an officer has to know how to combat those and Learning the technique is the first step to learning how to escape the technique in a life or death situation. Yeah, our mission is clear. We want to educate officers the best tools that they can utilize. We are in the Jiu Jitsu team, we are in the law enforcement team, and we're not going to stop. The, the energy of education is forever. Now, at, at every point among the, uh, along the way, we are always redirecting and tuning in to what serves better the community and the officers involved in what is happening currently in. United States and in the whole world, right? But that's, that's, this is the tuning in and the uh, refinement that we are doing right now. So it doesn't matter how safe the technique is statistically mm -hmm. or how safe it is in the deployment of someone or some a group of people who are highly trained in all the procedures, all the effects, all the outcomes and all the aftercare. It doesn't matter. What matters is the level of liability that presents itself when this technique is in the hands and in the, in the, on the tool belt and in the use of 
the lowest trained officer. That's the one that we have to consider in this situation. And for that reason, until law enforcement training as a whole nationwide escalates to a point where we can feel confident that yep. every user of a technique and a tool like this will do so safely before, during, and after the deployment of the technique, we support that, hey, this tool, no matter how safe it might be, it's only as safe as the training provided to the user. And that is where we're falling short as a country and as a department, every department, individually they're there, but policing as a whole, by and large, is falling short on that expectation, that training requirement. And as a result, we think this is a necessary change, especially in light of recent events. We 100% support the ban of neck restraints, vascular neck restraints for anything other than lethal force when it's life or death survival. And in that case, we absolutely support the use of the technique because not only will it save the officer's life, it will most likely save the suspect's life because the firearm wasn't necessary in the same situation.